Hi, my name is Becky Blosser. I am an assistant professor here at Pennsylvania College of Art and Design in the Fine Art Department. Um, and I've been teaching here for 14 years. So I'm excited to do this interview. The photo etching, uh, it can be addition, uh, where you're printing multiples of the same print. It can be mono printed, where you, you're printing uh, one-off images and kind of experimenting with the inking process. Uh, the prints that I have in the show are mono printed. You, if you look really closely, there are some sort of like white highlights painted across the plate. Uh, I prefer to print uh, photo etchings uh, as a mono print. Um, the process is very fragile, so the plate, um, the way that it's processed, uh, these plates, they're very fragile, so um, the plates kind of break down over time, so you can't do uh, really big additions. So mono printing, kind of embracing that breakdown and change of the plate can be kind of exciting. The work in the Faculty Biennial, um, it's a series of three photo etchings. Uh, they're monoprints. Um, I think they, I created them in maybe 2018. Um, it's an ongoing series, uh, so it's kind of like a continuation of uh, some of the um, kind of visual language and working processes that I've been working on for several years. Um, and the work in general is just about connecting structures and forms and patterns, organic and uh, built sort of elements, um, and kind of seeing how they compile and connect with each other. The work in the show is, um, it really becomes about this compressing um, of forms and shapes. Uh, the between the two pieces um, titled inner frame and outer frame um, you kind of see in, in the one piece there is this kind of really solid structure or foundation at the base of, of that shape um, sort of like these abstracted window frames and then in the second piece they sort of compress um, and kind of fold in on, on themselves um, so it really is about the action between um, those two movements um, and that just comes through the working process kind of thinking about a formal language and the third piece um, standing stone is the title of that piece and it almost reads as kind of like this phase or um, kind of uh, stage where it's either in the process of being built or sort of in the process of being destroyed so it's just all about shifting forms and um, shapes and thinking about building and creating things. That series too, it kind of, um, it has this sort of like organic snail-like shape or form um, and that was intentional, it's just something that came out of the process. Um, I love um, sort of organic things and creatures and just all of that kind of stuff. So it sometimes seeps into my work and creates these odd kind of unique forms and I just sort of go with it. Oh, photo etching is, um, there's just kind of a mystery to the process, I think, uh, to the prints after they're created. Uh, there's uh, much more contrast and uh, between the lights and the darks and has, uh, just a different sensibility. It also kind of creates a stopping point. As an artist, I always, and just with my process, it's like always making and changing and doing things uh, to the work. Uh, the printing process kind of allows you to do that, but then creates these stopping points that you can kind of, like you can't do anything else to it, or it, lim it kind of keeps you from doing anything else to the work. So it's, um, sort of like something that bubbles out from, from my uh, pro studio practice. All right, so photo etching uh, is kind of a complex process. Uh, and I wanna just describe what etching is. Uh, etching, uh, basically you have a plate, um, either metal or plastic, and you scratch into that plate. So your drawing ends up being the scratches into the surface of that plate. Um, and then how it's created is you wipe ink across the plate, buff it off, uh, so the ink ends up 
only existing in those kind of like ink wells that are either etched or scratched into the plate. And then that gets run through a press with a piece of paper and then you have your print. So what photo etching is, is that um, that etch process is a photographic process. So instead of working directly into the plate, at least for the, the prints that I created, um, you attach a, a photo, um, sort of light sensitive film onto the surface of the plate and all the etch happens in that film. Um, so the artist will uh, create their work on a clear piece of material or they'll work digitally or they'll work photographically. Uh, with this process, there's quite a range of different marks you can make in the work that I have in the show. They're all sort of hand-drawn elements, but then there are some digital elements as well, so it's like hand and digital drawing. Um, so when you have your artwork ready, it's on a clear piece of film, whether that be photographic or drawing, and that is laid over top of the, the plate with the photosensitive film on it. It's exposed to light, so all of the areas where your artwork covered that plate stay active and all the areas where the light hit, um, those areas harden. And then the, fill, the plate goes through a developer process, uh, the imagery is developed, and then the plate can be inked up uh, just like a regular etching would be inked up. Uh, so there's a um, really nice balance uh, with the physicality of, of going through the, the printing process and running it through the press. I do teach it here at PCAT. It's um, uh, taught in my Printmaking 2 class, uh, and it's the first assignment, so it really kind of um, gets them focused um, pretty quickly um, because you very quickly realize that it takes quite a bit of focus and understanding of like kind of working methodically through the process um, and embrace, and I, you know, throughout uh, teaching the process, I tried to emphasize embracing the failure and um, working through it. So um, it's always really wonderful to see students uh, at first be excited by the imagery that they see that the process can create, but then when confronted with um, creating the work, kind of maybe being slightly overwhelmed by um, what it might take to create the work, but then gaining control of that towards the end. Um, right now, um, my students are at the stage where they're creating the prints, and um, most of them are getting a really wonderful results, so it's gonna be exciting to critique that work in, in a week or two. Um, so, emerging printmakers, uh, I would say, you know, take advantage of the facilities and the community that you're in when you're working, um, when you're in school. Um, just use the equipment um, while you have it um, and uh, try to create your best work and uh, connect with the people that you're working around. I think printmaking um, is uh, really community oriented in the sense that you end up uh, sharing a workspace so you just end up connecting with people while you're making work so I think that's a really wonderful um, sort of component of um, just working in printmaking. Um, also you know look for your communities outside of school when you're um, done after you graduate, you know, you move on, you might be afraid, you know, you'll never um, come across a print shop again or you'll never be able to use a press again. Some of the equipment is specialized. Uh, there are, you know, several DIY uh, ways of working um, and there are also just uh, printmaking communities all over the place. There are shared, you know, artist-run workspaces and um, those create other opportunities to connect so just keep making your work and um, don't worry about it so much I think that's the biggest thing I see is um, people just worrying about uh, lack of facilities um, just make the work and and be creative um, and
and that'll take you to the next thing. I feel like I have a lot of influences and I look outside of art um, to be an influence as well. Um, I think for some of the work um, that I've created recently and uh, in the show, um, the work in the show, I definitely think back and I have looked back to uh, Giovanni Battista Piranesi's work, who is an 18th century printmaker um, who created these really wonderful kind of lush um, prints, um, etchings of uh, the Roman ruins. Um, and he's also known for uh, the uh, series of uh, sort of imagined prisons. So I think there's kind of like this connection between sort of like imagined spaces, but um, very, very different, but um, there are elements of his work that are just really wonderful that I keep going back to. Um, there's also a book that I always go back to, um, The Poetics of Space uh, by Gaston Bachelard. Um, in that book, it's really about connecting uh, sort of poetic, imagined, thinking and sort of emotional understandings with different spaces. Um, and I think that's something that I do in my work often. Um, I love uh, the work of contemporary artists like Sarah Z. I love her work. Uh, uh, Julie Marutu was always a big influence of mine. Uh, when I was in grad school, I actually got to visit her studio in Harlem at the time. So that was pretty cool. Um, there is currently, uh, I've been listening to a podcast uh, called Pine Copper Lime, um, and it's all about you know covering contemporary printmaking. So it's really cool to see the things that are happening um, now in printmaking. I think printmaking uh, tends to have sort of like this historical sort of place and understanding uh, that there are so many things happening. Uh, with the medium in, the in a contemporary sense that um, I think Pine Copper Line does a really good job of covering that. Um, so those are a couple. Um, there's, it's like every time you ask me, I, I'd probably say a, a different thing. Um, it's kind of like what's bubbling to the surface. And I tend to be influenced by a lot of sculptors. Um, it's like Rachel White Reed, I love her work. Um, Gordon Monta Clark was always somebody that I look back to. It's kind of like, people thinking about space. Uh, the pandemic has definitely slowed down my practice, I would say. Uh, a lot of my attention has gone to teaching and kind of preparing for the possibility of different scenarios. I think um, it's just kind of drawn most of my attention and energy. I feel like now things are starting to uh, settle down a little bit as far as me being prepared for those things. Uh, so I'm hoping that my studio practice will pick up, but I've been sort of just allowing myself to be okay with uh, having a studio practice uh, that maybe is a little slower than it would typically be. But with that said, I am constantly like drawing little sketches or finding moments to like, you know, read or, uh, you know, drawing on my tablet. So there's a lot of ways to just keep working. And a lot of my practice has to do with kind of piecing fragments together. So it's um, really conducive to, you know, doing a little bit and then seeing what it develops into. Um, post pandemic, uh, definitely traveling is right up there. I'm really looking forward to getting out of Lancaster for a little bit. I love Lancaster, but uh, I would really love to just be able to travel, um, you know, I would love to uh, participate in a couple residencies, you know, start showing my work uh, more regularly, all the things that sort of kind of um, became maybe less fulfilling versions of themselves. I'm looking forward to um, things going back to normal, whatever normal would be. Um, I also... It's hard to get a sense for what post-pandemic will be, um, so.